first things first, it looks like the government have decided that this Christmas we should be worried about COVID again. Remember that? Remember COVID? Remember that little virus, right? That little pandemic that was occurring in the country? I think for the most part, if you live in some metropolitan cities, I know for mine, especially in London, you don't even know there is such a thing as a pandemic. The only, the only time you basically realise it is if you go on any sort of public transport, maybe if you go into like a news, like an off licence, you might see like, you know, where you go, where you go to the till, they have like a little thing hanging from the roof where they like selling little masks and stuff for like a fiver or a quid or whatever. That's the only time you realise we're in a pandemic. Or if, again, if you go to like a shopping centre, a shopping mall, sometimes security guards or cell assistants might wear a mask because they feel unsafe. But apart from that, you would have no idea we were living in some sort of pandemic. None. But obviously, the government want us to um, want to keep us in check, want to keep us from living our lives to some certain um, extent. And now they're keeping an eye on supposed rising cases, which again shouldn't be accounting for really, because you think about it, if the thing to worry, the thing to worry about really and truly with COVID should always be deaths in it. I've always thought that, especially when you think about the cases, because the cases compared to deaths are pretty, there's a, there's a real big gap between how many cases there are usually, they're usually in the thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands, and the deaths are like way way behind that maybe a couple of hundred don't get me wrong it's bad that people die but people die all the time it just is what it is why are we kind of concentrating on the cases all the time why has that always been the thing and i think maybe it might just be strictly like a um a click thing right because cases just look more juicy if you say there's been reports of 1000 cases of covid over the last 24 hours people are gonna be like <gasps> do you know what i mean instantly Whereas if you say people, 100 people have died or 50 people have died or 30 people have died, it doesn't really hit the same. So maybe it's just a purely numbers thing. But anyway, we go on. BBC News, number 10, keeping a close eye on rising cases. It says here, um, daily cases have been above 40,000 for seven days in a row with 43,738 43, new cases of COVID reported on Tuesday. Another 223 deaths have been recorded, the highest since March, although daily figures are often bigger on Tuesdays. Why? Is it Tuesday like a COVID party death day or something? My word. PM Boris Johnson has told the cabinet that the UK faces a difficult winter. Under the, the current guide, the government's sorry, winter plan, if measures currently in place are not enough to prevent the unsustainable pressure on the NHS then steps like making face coverings mandatory in some settings introducing vaccine passports could be considered as part of plan B so they're still putting off the idea of having a lockdown which I'm happy about but the idea that you have to go and carry around a vaccine passport to go into your local Weatherspoons or the idea you have to wear a face covering before you eat your chips and when you eat your chips at Weatherspoons you then take it down then you put it back on again and that's somehow going to protect you from COVID is legitimately insane we should all come to the realisation nowadays especially after all the little theatres that we were doing beforehand cleaning down our, our groceries I did it too cleaning down our groceries for one time for like a week I wore gloves when I was going shopping standing 10 you know 10 feet apart all this bullshit we were doing beforehand let's be honest and say it didn't necessarily protect us from covid what protects us from covid for the most part was the lockdown because we were limited in the amount of interactions we were doing with people and it still didn't curtail the thing right look at what's happening in australia and new zealand they're entirely they're basically completely locked down they are you know an island that can basically um protect its borders better than anywhere else right especially landlocked areas and they've been basically you know they're still kind of suffering um, at the hands of the pandemic now at this very moment. So this idea that somehow vaccine passports and mask mandates are going to make any real sustainable difference is just a little bit naive, um, especially where, again, when you consider the time of year it is, we're told that winter in general, people get many viruses along that kind of time. I'd imagine being at home and not being around other people, not having built up your immune system, all these things that we kind of known, uh, you know, as we've grown up just intuitively through our parents, through little anecdotes that we hear in school through maybe teachers and nurses coming in and telling us these things that we've already known they're trying to like it's as if they're trying to memory hole it like what dsp does right dsp ducks at field would like get a thousand pound tip and then he'll pretend the next day like it didn't exist and keep begging for new tips the next day it's like no you just got a thousand if you want 150 per day maybe you should kind of divide that up into like days and then say hey i'm good for the next seven and then start begging on the eighth day but no, he just starts begging again the next day. So I think people have done the same thing or the government are doing the same thing with memory holding all these things that we've kind of been taught when we were growing up. No one talks about, no one talks about immune system. No one talks about um, winter season or, you know, the cold being kind of maybe a precursor or an accelerant for people getting some sort
sort of um, airborne virus. It's not something that's been spoken about. It's just let's get the passports in and let's get the mask mandate started. And I wonder why they're pushing for stuff like that. I wonder why. Again, governmental control, right? They can't let go. It's as if they can't let go. And if, and I think some of it has to do with you know, really tin foil hat wearing government control shit. And I also think some of it has to do, you look at somebody like a Dr. Fauci in America, has to do with the fame and the notoriety of it, of being able to go on Good Morning Britain and be able to go on all these like radio stations and talk about science, talk about virology, talk about um, public health and all these things, right? On a big platform, have your name written on the bottom with maybe your Twitter handle, your social or whatever social media handle you got at the moment, your title, right? And be able to talk about things and have people actually listen to you when they never listened to you before, right? You were the kid in class who no one cared about. Your topic that you were kind of studying was boring to most people because most people are studying, you know, maybe creative things and trying to get into the arts and whatnot. No one cared that you were going to study virology. No one cared that you were going to go to flip in um, parts of Southeast Asia and study, you know, um, medicines that can come from bats or whatever, whatever you were doing. No one gave a shit. Now, suddenly now, here you are, 43 years old, single, we had no one to hang around with and now people are you know zooming you from your um, apartment somewhere in Stoke Newton and asking you on your flipping theories and ideas about what should be COVID of course that attention is going to be addictive you don't want to let it go look at Dr Fauci he's 80 something years old and he can't stop talking in front of the cameras he can't stop talking he can't stop giving people advice he's got a documentary out at the moment now on what the Disney channel talking about what did he did, did he succeed in ending the pandemic in America no he didn't it's still running rampant over there, but somehow he's got a documentary that he's basically speaking upon, like as if like he's some sort of champion, like as if he's done loads of good when there's been instances of him prior of kind of double speaking, saying one thing, doing the other thing, right? He was the one that was pushing people not to buy masks in general to, so they didn't get taken away from the nurses and shit. And then later on down the line, masks are very crucial. And then later on down the line, it's this one, it's that one. It's just like, I get it, but let's just be upfront about it and say you can't, you know, you can't let go of the fame. You can't let, let let go of the notoriety and the recognition because usually people don't give a shit about what you do because when the pandemic's over, all these people go scurry away into laboratories and no one hears from them ever again. They couldn't even buy airtime that the way they are getting out at the moment. But now, because everyone's so scared and because everyone's so worried and doesn't want to lose their loved ones, which is understandable because we all know somebody who unfortunately has succumbed to the virus in various different ways, now we all, we kind of all have to kowtow. That's what I don't understand, especially when you look at the numbers. The numbers are in the hundreds. The numbers are in the thousands. We've got populations of multi, we've got pop, nations with populations in the double digit millions. Yet we having to kind of make all our sort of daily life decisions based on a small m minority of people who are going to get sick and maybe unfortunately might pass away. I just don't know what is going on here. And again, I'm somebody that went out and got the vaccine primarily because I want to travel primarily because my kind of one of my side occupations in terms of DJing right it requires me to sometimes travel and go to places to play right I'm gonna have the ability again it's not traveling don't get me wrong but I'm gonna have the ability to go to Birmingham hope um, hopefully soon at the end of November to go DJ soon right get your tickets link down below in the descriptions I'm gonna go play in 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 Birmingham in November 27th who would have known maybe there could have been a time where in order to go play in a nightclub you need to have a vaccine passport okay cool I've got my thing done already but if I hadn't got it done I couldn't necessarily get two jabs in time before I had my gig so it would have cost me money to recognition um the ability to play in front of a, a live captive audience so I got it because of my job my job requires me to just get those things and again my other kind of hobby is going club hopping and doing a little bit of techno tourism that also requires me to go to various countries within the EU who have got a lot more stringent or maybe stricter policies in terms of who comes in who doesn't come in the only way I could get in and out and have some sort of enjoyable holiday where I'm not trying to spend too much money in terms of testing all that stuff is to get vaccinated that's the only reason why I got it done only reason if not then I probably wouldn't have got vaccinated I probably would have just continued living my life taking my necessary precautions and just continued on with it because for the most part i'm a fit young person it doesn't necessarily affect me in that way but if it did again if i was living in a different situation i would have got it done but i think at this point the people that haven't got vaccinated are probably not going to change their mind and the people that have got vaccinated are never going to change the mind of people that are not going to get vaccinated it just is what it is we've just got two camps they're both weirdly patriotic or Ra ra about their points and position, which I don't get. It's just a needle in your arm. You're not some sort of crusader. You're not activist because you got a flipping vaccine. Relax, wind your neck in. But also the ones that don't get vaccinated, you're not suddenly now some sort of scientist that we should be paying attention to. You're also reading your stats and your information through Google or through some uncle that you speak to on, on Facebook. No, allow it. 
I just want to move on with life. That's what I want to do. I just want to move on. Can't we just have a Christmas or some sort of new year where we're not thinking about this shit anymore? Where we're just kind of accepted that this is part of our everyday life. Similar to what happened with flipping terrorism at one point. Similar to what happened to SARS. Similar, similar to what happened to, um, what else? Um, the war in Afghanistan, right? Do you remember that, guys? The war in Afghanistan. I was a big dude. Everyone was caring about that. All of a sudden, people didn't care anymore. WMDs, right? No one cared anymore. Seven Sins is going to come over and flipping, you know, run a plane into a Big Ben. Everyone just kept on carrying on with their lives. Unfortunately, terrible things happen in the world on a daily basis, but we have to be able to live our lives because we don't have that long on this earth. If we all had that kind of timer from the, was it, what is it? Was it, um, was it, uh, was it Black Mirror where they all were a watch where it kind of counted down to the day that they were going to die? Would we really be wasting our time going over mask mandates, going over talking about plan B's and stuff for COVID? Would we really be doing that? Ugh. The Prime Minister told them uh, the government's, uh, the Prime Minister told ministers that the government had a plan in place to steer the country through the period and that the people should continue to follow the guidance and get their jabs when called upon. Down the street said Mr Johnson has stressed that the government's autumn and winter plan continues to keep the virus under control. Number 10 said the government was not complacent and not uh, uh, about rising cases but that due to the vaccination program the levels are seeing uh, in both patients in the admitted hospital and deaths are far lower than what we see in previous peaks. Yes! And why do people say that more often? This is the most important thing. The levels we are seeing in both patients admitted to hospital and deaths are far lower than what we see previous week peaks. But we keep talking about cases. Why? Because the number's juicier. Death numbers aren't as juicy as thousands. You know what I mean? Hundreds and thousands or thousands in general compared to a couple, right? Double digits or triple digits isn't as sexier. So that's why they don't speak about it. It's annoying. The seven day average of the new COVID cases in the UK has now risen around uh, 34,000 a day after the beginning of October to 44,145 cases per day. And the number of people in the hospital across the UK who have COVID has risen by 10% in a week from 7,309 or 39, sorry, in, on October 11th uh, to 7,749 on Monday. The number of deaths within a 28 day of a positive coronavirus test reported on Tuesday was the highest since 9th of March, although due to reporting lags over the weekend, daily figures are often higher on Tuesday. Now, don't get me wrong. There is some sort of, um, there is some sort of, uh, kind of macabre humor that's sort of attached to the idea of like people living their lives on one side of the, of, of the coin and on the other side of the coin you've got people legitimately on ventilators in hospitals struggling to breathe i think about it all the time when i go for, to a rave when i'm out in a rave pinging off my head on the dance floor sweating profusely punching the air i sometimes think to myself wow the contrast in experiences and what we're kind of living through is absolutely nuts. The fact that I've come in this place, obviously I'm double jabbed, but still I've come into this place, I'm rubbing shoulder to shoulder with loads of different people from all the different walks of life, sweating profusely, right? Living my best life. But then there's somebody else, uh, you know, maybe five minutes away from me, 10 minutes away from me, is really struggling to, to basically breathe. It's struggling not to stress out. It's struggling not to worry. Is been given you know the prognosis that they're probably going to pass away in the next 24 hours or so that's absolutely nuts but also that's life before the pandemic that was also happening but we didn't know it because we had no knowledge of it and news wasn't talking about it and we were like blissfully unaware or we tried to bury our head in the sand we do have a world issues going on but now it's come to our doorstep all of a sudden especially in the west like we really i think we really kind of overvalue each of our lives in general we always think it's it's it's, it's, it's like it's like as if like the governments are trying to save everybody. You're not going to save everyone. Man, like imagine if you did everything correct. All the mandates you want, everyone wiped down all their flipping groceries, right? Kids covered in flipping cling film. Do everything you want. Do everything. People would still die. That's the real thing that people don't want to come to grips with. People will still die. And of course, we're trying to, you know, mitigate it and kind of lower the numbers. We don't overwhelm the NHS. All that bullshit. Yeah. Go jump off a cliff somewhere but people would still pass away. That is the truth of the matter. And I, for one, I'm just done with it. I'm done. I'm not sure about you guys, but I'm really done with it. No no booster jabs for me. None of that nonsense. I'm already wearing mask on the train at the moment because I don't like... I'm in a confined space and I don't want to breathe everyone's air. And also, I like the idea of being incognito on the train. I quite like that. Like Kanye, how he's wearing his mask at the moment. I quite like that COVID's brought about this kind of acceptance with people wearing full head, 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 face masks and helmets when they go into stores and shit and no one says anything. I think that's fucking brilliant, right? But in general, I'm living my life, man. And I'm living my life. That's what I'm going to do. I'm living my life. That's it. I'm, I'm not going to do anything else. I've had enough.